In this video, I'll be sharing the three things you need to have to get started building an Apple Home. And if you stick around until the end, I'll show you how to set up two types of devices in the Apple Home app. What's up everyone, my name is Dylan and this channel is about my favorite tech and smart home tech that I use to make life easier and more efficient. If tech or building a smart home is something that you're interested in, consider hitting the subscribe button and stick around as we grow this channel. So it's been a dream of mine for several years to build a smart home. The idea of having a home that just does things for me just seemed way too cool. And really, who doesn't watch Iron Man and wish they could have a home like Tony Stark? So back in 2020, I began to make that dream a reality when my wife and I bought our first home. I started with about five SmartThings products and an Amazon Echo Dot. Fast forward a few years and I've moved through all of the major platforms including Amazon, Google, and even Home Assistant. And this past December, we moved into a new home and I began building out my dream smart home right away. In the end, HomeKit was the perfect base smart home platform for us to use for two reasons, security and the access we already had. My wife and I already had iPhones, iPads, MacBooks, and Apple Watches, and they all had Siri one command away no matter where we were. And with the addition of a HomePod mini in late 2020, it just became a no brainer. It was finally time to replace a so I've already given you a few of the benefits of an Apple Home, and with the addition of the Matter Smart Home protocol coming rapidly, it can only get better from here. So with that, let's talk about everything you'll need to start building your very own Apple Home. The first thing you'll want to get is an Apple HomePod. The HomePod will be what allows you to not only connect to your home from anywhere in the world, but also allows you to run automations and even stores and secures your data so that it doesn't leave your home. In essence, it becomes what you communicate with so that all of your information stays local to your home and it allows you to run automations in your home. Now, you may already have a home hub in your home. If you have an Apple TV, iPad, or a HomePod, you already technically have an Apple Home. While I would recommend you stay away from the iPad option as it's the slowest and least efficient option, if you already have an old iPad laying around, you may want to get started with that and upgrade as you build. So the second thing you'll need is an iPhone or an iPad to add devices and control your smart home. And finally, you'll need smart home devices. Things like smart plugs, motion sensors, door and window sensors, smart bulbs, smart light switches, and cameras are all a good place to start when building out your Apple smart home. It is important to note that some devices work natively with HomeKit, while others require a hub or a bridge from the manufacturer to get them into HomeKit. For example, Philips Hue requires a bridge to connect their bulbs to the Apple Home. Look at device descriptions when buying to see if a bridge is necessary. Devices that work natively with HomeKit will have a code that will be scanned when adding the device into HomeKit. Using hubs can be annoying, but in my personal experience, it does tend to make devices more reliable. So don't shy away from it too quickly. All right, so now that we've talked about what you'll need, let's jump in and add a couple of devices into HomeKit. All right, so here I have a brand new Apple Home that I've created called Test Home that has zero devices in it. So we're gonna add a couple of different kinds of devices, one that does not need a bridge and one that does. So the first one we're gonna start with is one that does not need a bridge. And I can tell that this Maris Smart Plug does not need a bridge because it has that QR code on there. And you can usually tell that a device doesn't need uh, a bridge by that QR code. So if you see that, typically nine times out of 10, you're gonna be able to add that straight into your Apple HomeKit. So I've got a plug here. I'm just gonna bring this plug over here and I'm gonna plug this smart plug in. So the first thing we're gonna do when that plug is ready to be set up is we're gonna go into our Apple Home and we're gonna tap Add Accessory. So as soon as you hit Add Accessory, you can see it brings your camera up because it wants you to scan that code. Some devices, like this NanoLeaf smart bulb, the, the QR code is grayed out and kind of hard to see. Plus, if you put it in a lamp, you're not gonna be able to reach in there. So every device actually has a number on it as well. And there's another way you can add that device just by going to more options. And I can look and one of these plugs is that plug. And as soon as I tap in there, it'll let me add that number. But we're not gonna do it that way this time. We're gonna go ahead and scan the code. So as you can see, it pulls my camera up. As Soon as it catches that, it'll let me add it to my Apple Home. All right, and as you can see, it pops up. Where do you wanna put this? Now, I haven't created any rooms in here yet, so uh, we can, let's just, let's just go ahead and throw it in our living room. We'll just go ahead and put it in the living room of our new home. 
and then we'll rename it. Let's just call this lamp. Say we're plugging a lamp into it. And you can choose if it's a, if maybe you're plugging a fan or a light into it. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to light since we're gonna plug a lamp into it. Now it'll give me the opportunity to add some automations. Um, now you can't create automations until you have a home hub. So we're gonna skip that and not turn anything on. And just like that, we have it added to the home kit. So now you can see if I tap that, turns the plug on. You can see there's a green light there, turns it off, on, off. That easy to add a device into HomeKit. So the next device we're gonna add is a device that does need a bridge. We're actually gonna take this button from Akara. Now these things are great because I can put these anywhere and I can just push that button to trigger a scene or some devices, a device to turn on or off. It does single press, double press, or long hold. And all three of those will do something different. So. We're gonna add that, but these Akara devices do not have a HomeKit code on them. So we need to add a Akara bridge and we're gonna do the Akara E1 bridge. Now you can get this bridge on Amazon for I don't know, somewhere around 20, 25 bucks. And as you can see, it does have a HomeKit code on it. So that's what we're gonna scan into our home. But this is a really neat uh, hub that they have that has no extra functionality. It just gets your devices into HomeKit. They have a bunch of other hubs that all have different functionality. Definitely look into their hubs. They're awesome. But so yeah, so we're going to plug that into a power brick and plug that into our strip. Power strip. So now that we have that plugged in, we're going to go ahead and hit plus. We're going to add an accessory. And I'm going to scan this code. So you can see here, this is classified as a bridge because it's going to bridge a car as accessories with our home kit. So we're gonna add that to home. All right, we'll put that in our living room. And I'm gonna leave that so that we know what it's called, which one it is. Uh, it also comes with a security system. So if you have door tags or motion sensors and you wanna put those on your, you know, any doors that you want to be alerted when they're open, such as your front door or back door, or maybe a garage door, uh, it'll actually alarm, alert your security system through HomeKit and through the Acara app, which we'll set up in a minute. So that's pretty neat. So we're not gonna do any automations and bridge is added. All right, so now we have our Acara bridge in, in this app as well. So in order to set up our button, we're gonna actually need to go through the Acara app. So we'll go here to the Acara app and it's already recognized because we add that in a home kit that a new accessory is found. So we're gonna go ahead and bind that hub. We're just gonna leave all that the same. Now that I have the hub and home kit, I'm in the Akara app. I'm gonna go to add an accessory and I'm gonna choose my, I think it's under remote controls. There we go. Wireless mini switch. We're gonna bind that to the hub. Can it walk me through that? All right, so now we've added that button. We'll go back in here to our test home. All right, so if we go to our living room, which is where we added the hub, the devices always go to the room that the hub is in, in HomeKit, and then you can move them wherever from there if you want to, but you can see I have my button here. And that's it. We now have multiple devices that we can control through our home app and with our voice using Siri. It can definitely be a bit confusing when you're first getting started, but before long you'll get the hang of it and I think you'll find it's definitely worth it to have a home that is secure, but easy to control using just your voice or your iPhone. In the next video, I'll be showing you some of my personal favorite home automations that I'm using in my house and how I set them up. So definitely hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that video. And thank you for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.